Hey there, this video is sponsored by the Edge Pro, the place to go to get all of your needs met for clipper repair and or clipper blade sharpening. If you'd like to find out more about how they can help you with your business, see their link below. This past week I ran into a shear that was double beveled and tried to recreate basically what I saw and what I had to deal with. You can actually see on this blade that it has two distinct angles on it. One was probably about 45 degrees. The other on top of that near the edge was about 30 degrees. So I had to actually go in and correct that. And there's a couple of different ways that you can do it uh, in order to be able to solve this problem. I'm going to show you one way on the Hero 2, which is a flat tone system. And I'll show you another way on the uh, Okami Gold using that in conjunction uh, with a flat tone as well and uh, just kind of go through different things like uh, amount of time that it takes and uh, some time saving tips and tricks that you can use if you're using two different kinds of machines versus one. Okay to start off with I'm going to start with an 80 grit pad um, on the hair too. One of the, the biggest struggles that people have is bringing up an angle quickly. I have my clamp set for 45 degrees which is what I want to sharpen the shear at and I'm going to start the process of doing sharpening. The difficulty that you'll run into when you're working back and forth is it's going to take a while for the edge to come all the way up, or the, the grind that you're creating to come all the way up to the top of the edge. So what we'll do is we'll go back and forth just a few times to establish some of the angle and then we'll start a rotation doing our convexing. We're going to continue to do this until we start to bring up that convexed front surface on the shear. Uh, it's hard to see in the video. I'll pull the shear out and let you see it, but it is starting to round up on the back side of that angle, and we're just starting to get to the edge on some of the shear. So we're going to work in the throat, work up with the tip, and I'm going to continue to work the process back and forth, bringing up my angle. You can actually see I'm doing a little bit of a step up as I go as well. I'm going to work back and forth so I start to see a burr start to form and continuing to convex every few strokes of going back and forth to establish that angle. The convexing in between doing the strokes actually aids in maintaining that convex on the front surface of the scissor. If not, you're just bringing up a real steep angle and then you have to convex it in. It just takes off a little bit less of the metal on the front surface of the shear by working back and forth, bringing that angle closer to the edge, working back and forth, doing a little convexing, working back and forth, doing a little bit of convexing until that shear is convexed up. Now the tip is wanting to give me a little bit of a fit, so I'm gonna work just that tip area some. I'm gonna do a progressive edge. This is where I go back and forth and raise up and down as I do the work to help blend all that in. Work just a little bit more to smooth things out. I'm gonna come to a complete stop. We'll take the shear out and show you what we came up with. Now you can actually see that we've done away with all of those different bevels that are on the front surface of that scissor and reconvex the shear. But you can see it's quite a bit of scratch pattern that's on the shear. So what we're gonna do is we'll switch from the 80 to the 60. Okay, so now we switch to the 60 from the 80, and we're going to do the same thing that we did before. The only difference is we're really just going to deal with the convex front surface. We're really not going to worry too much about the edge. We'll work the edge some. Always make sure you're getting your throat and your tip. Don't overturn onto your tip, and don't gouge into your throat into the, into the disc. You don't want to end up with a rounded tip or a gouged out throat. It looks terrible, and potentially could cut terrible. And all I'm doing right now is I'm actually just dealing with the cosmetics more on the front of the surface of the scissor than the edge itself. I've already brought up an edge, and I'm going to deal with that burr in just a moment. So, we'll pull this out, shut this down, take a look at the shear. You can actually see that we've removed some of that scratch pattern now. Made it a little bit smoother, much like sanding wood. We're just trying to smooth that out, make everything look really good. So the six, the 80 and then the 60 uh, is what you start with. Once you're done with that though, you have a very hefty burr on the edge of the shear. And I'm not sure how well this will come through for a YouTube video, 
Uh, I may do a video that's a there we go. That's a little bit better. You can see that. You can see that real rough burr that's on there. What we want to do is we actually want to pull that burr back with a water stone and deal with that burr before we go to our 30, our 15, and our 9 micron to reconvex the scissor and bring this all the way back in so that we can polish it out. So we'll do that here in just a sec. All right, so I've moved my machine over and I'm gonna go ahead and wet my water stone. Uh, please be aware that right now there's a little bit of wear on the stone. Really, I should take this stone and redress it before I do this. But for the sake of time for the video while I'm shooting this, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna pull that burr back uh, only one shear has been done on this. That's why you see some of the dirt that's there. You can actually see the dirt from that first shear. I'm going to pull that burr back and so that I can deal with that. I'm going to make one more pass on that, pulling that burr back, because that's such a heavy, coarse burr. I'm going to flip-flop that burr off. I want to try and get rid of as much of that burr as I can before I do any of the other sharpening on the shear. So I'm going to just take a towel. I'm going to wipe back and forth and see how much of that burr I can actually pull off. The majority of the burr at this point is gone. It's not completely gone, but for the most part, the majority of that burr is gone off of the shear. And now I have a shear that's actually ready to go back on the machine. I can sharpen it at 30, I can sharpen it at 15, I can sharpen it at 9, and then I can polish that up. And that's going to create a really nice reconvexing of the surface. Uh, I'm not going to take the time to do all of that for this video, uh, but what I will do is uh, I'm going to do that later on when I go through the second step of the video because I'm also going to have to deal with the inside of the shear. You can see that there's quite a bit of damage that's been done on the inside only because there's no longer an inside line on this shear and the shear that I was working on in the field had the same situation. I'm going to show you how to chamfer that edge and recreate that inside line on the shear in another video and then at that point I'll repolish this edge up. But just for this one here we're going to show how to deal with the the, the problems that you have with reconvexing the shear and doing it reasonably quick so that you can get back to square one and start that shear over again and bring it back to as close to factory new um, as is possible. All right, so I recreated the same situation with the shear. I double beveled it at the edge. I'm gonna go ahead and solve the problem now with the Okami convexing clamp. And clamp it in halfway over the pivot hole with the pivot hole to the right clamp that blade in so it's fairly straight across the top of the clamp and where the two parts of the clamp comes together it forms a line that's set for 45 degrees on the clamp. So I'm going to start my cut. The problem is, is I have not reached my edge. I will not reach my edge with just a few passes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing some step up grinds. So I'll step up, step up, step up, step up as I cut across the top of the scissor and create a number of facets across the front surface of the shear. Then I'll go back to starting towards my edge again. And I'll continue to do that until I get all the way to the edge. I'm gonna step up, step up, step up, and again, the same thing. Until I start to bring up a burr. Make a few more passes, cut again, cut again, Cut again, work my edge some more. And each time what I'm doing is I'm fastening that front surface and re-rounding that front surface of the shear. Or at least cutting multiple bevels across that shear that I'm gonna to blend together in just a bit on here too. You could also blend it in with just the polishing wheel, but that takes a little bit more work for something like this. And what it's doing too is you're not using up your discs. Uh, it is a little bit quicker to do this this way because you're also cutting out a step in the process as well. All right, so we're gonna to continue to work until we bring up a burr. Once we've brought up a burr, and there's the burr popping now. Cut, 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 and cut to facet that front surface. We actually now have a faceted front surface on the blade that is ready to be reconvexed. Sorry for my lighting here. Should have thought this one through a little bit more. Uh, but we'll do a little bit better with a different video here in the near future. All right, so now you can see a little bit better what I did with the uh, Okami Gold. You can also see all that scratch pattern that's on there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my 30 micron disc. My fixture is set for 45 degrees. 
and I'm going to reconvex that front surface. The only difference is that's going to make it a little bit easier now because I have all those faceted front surfaces and I can avoid my 80 and 60 micron discs. So I reconvex that front surface all the way up to that edge. Work that tip. All right, so now you can see that the shear has been reconvex on the front surface. Everything is smoothed out, smoothed out to the 30. You need to work that tip a little bit more because you can see I still haven't gotten all the way to my edge there. But I would do that on the 30, the 15, and the 9, bringing that all the way up and then dealing with the burr that was created uh, off of the shear. So I don't have to worry about dealing with the burr between the 60 and the 80 on this one because I was doing this on the 800 grit diamond wheel. Um, on this one, I will go back uh, later on and show how to rework that inside again, like we had talked about. Once that is recreated, I'll recreate that home line on the inside, and then we will go back in the next video next week and show some polishing as well. So this is just the first step that you have to go through when you're actually recreating that convex in the front surface. Um, next week, we will go through chamfering the inside and then polishing the edge up to make sure that you have basically as close to new of a shear as you can get in this type of a situation. Remember, you can take a Cadillac and turn it into a Pinto. It's not always that easy to take a Pinto and turn it back into a Cadillac. See you next week.